on in and welcome to my review, my recap of Ready Love Season 4, Episode 2. And um, in this episode, we starting to really see some insights into Chance and Dunbar. We knew this, we was going to have to crack this code. And Dr. Stacy is cracking the code of a Chance and Dunbar because this whole little uh, facade they got going is falling all apart. The veneer is, is falling all apart. <laughs> But you know what? They did something different this year. They're doing home visits. Oh, no. What did Dr. Nicole do home visits last year? If she did, it seemed like she did them later in the episode. But we're going to get to that, too. But before we get to that, uh, we're going to say two things that need to change. One is Ricky's going to need to get some Vaseline for his lips. I'm telling you, those lips are cracked. And every time I see them on the screen, I just, just want to be one to go like this, put some Vaseline on the lips. He's going to need to get some Vaseline on lips. And Catherine's going to need to wear something outside of these sweatpants, especially when another woman is coming to pick up her man. We're going to get to her. Uh, but let's go ahead and start off with Chance and Dunbar, as, or as uh, Daddy Dunbar's date called him, a Tay Diggs. Girl, uh, that's low-key shade. She may not have meant it to be low-key shade because she a minister and everything. She probably didn't know it. But I don't think that Daddy Dunbar is anywhere near the age of Tay Diggs. I don't think so. I think Tay Diggs has got to be at least in his 50s, early 50s. And I don't think a daddy Dunbar is in his 50s. So when a 30-year-old calls you a man who's in his early 50s and say you look like him, <laughs> that's low-key shade. That's saying you look like my daddy. Uh, Tay Diggs could be Crystal's daddy, and she just called her date her daddy. Like we said, he a daddy. A daddy Dunbar, he was over there ascending chance his daughter on a prom date last week and then this week he's actually taking his daughter out on her daddy daughter date <laughs> a daddy daughter date oh my goodness but i'm gonna tell you this about these dates uh, the ladies got screwed last week they got screwed because these dates this week were way better than the dates the women got last week these women that they picked out for these men i'm telling you it was almost like they hand a crafted some of these women for these men these ladies, these are wannabe fiancés, wannabe wives, they better watch out because these producers sent these men out on some real, <laughs> real dates. And those dates, those women got last week, I mean, they were nice guys, but some of them were nowhere near what those women would have liked. Nowhere near it. For instance, this date that Chance went out on last week, we knew she wouldn't like that guy. He was way too young, way too immature, way too inexperienced for her. But this date that Daddy Dunbar went out with his uh, daddy daughter, he was like, ooh, this is the best date I ever been on in my entire life. What, Daddy Dunbar? This was the best date you've ever been on your entire life? That is saying a lot. But this girl, Crystal, she was a minister. She was talking about how she wants to be submissive. She was saying all the right things to Daddy Dunbar. Because we finding out that uh, Chance isn't as submissive to Daddy Dunbar <clears throat> as she tries to say she is. Because oftentimes when he opens up her mouth, uh, she claps back. <laughs> she claps back. So this whole little game they play on, this whole little facade, I'm telling you, it's gonna fall down, it's gonna fall down. And we could see that soon as Dr. Stacy sat down in front of Daddy Dunbar, the tears start welling up in his eyes. <laughs> and next thing you know, it was a waterfalls. It was waterfalls. But one thing I like doc about Dr. Stacy is she's holding them accountable because when they first sat down in this episode, she told them, hey, I don't know what went on at that last date, uh, but we're going to respect these dates a little bit more than you did, Daddy Dunbar. We're going to respect them a little bit more. And what was interesting is he didn't want to take accountability for it and Chance didn't even want to hold him accountable. She was taken up for him too. And everybody knows that what he did to that band last week was disrespectful. So I'm really confused. Actually, I'm not confused because I'm starting to figure them out too. Um, but of how the fact that he doesn't recognize that it as disrespectful and how a chance didn't see it as disrespectful and was co-signing on that bad behavior. That I didn't like. But Chance over here talking about, I don't mind his daddy energy. What's wrong with him being my uh, protector? Uh, what Chance is talking about is what's wrong with him being my provider. My provider. I'm starting to get the idea. I want to know. We heard from Ricky that he's paying all the bills. I want to know from Daddy Dunbar, is he paying all the bills? Is he paying all the bills? Because 
my little instincts right now are starting to flare up with Chance. And what Chance, I believe, is starting to like about Daddy Dunbar is she likes some aspects of the daddy role, but she doesn't like other aspects of the daddy role. I'm starting to feel like she's more than comfortable taking Daddy Dunbar's money, but I'm not going to be so sure she wants to do everything that Daddy Dunbar says. Because if that were the case, they shouldn't be on the show. They should be married. Why are you here then? If you love exactly what he's doing, what he's putting out, and he so-called loves you and is ready to go down to the courthouse or have a wedding, why are we here? I suspect that uh, Chance likes Daddy Dunbar's money, that he is the provider and he's paying all the bills, but she really doesn't want to follow all the rules of Daddy Dunbar. She really doesn't want to do everything uh, he has to say, but she's playing along because these bills are getting paid. That's what I suspect. I could be wrong, people. I could be wrong. We'll have to figure it out as time goes on, but that's what I'm thinking. And it's also getting to the point of what Daddy Dunbar is saying is he doesn't quite believe that Chance is really the submissive woman that he wants. He doesn't quite believe it. He doesn't believe it's in her soul, that it's in her spirit. And you know what, Daddy Dunbar? I agree. I don't think it's in her soul and her spirit either. I think it's all a way to get to getting her bills paid. I'm going to say it. I'm going to say it. And when Daddy Dunbar was sent across from Crystal, what he felt was real, authentic submissiveness. A woman who is real, real about it and who is doing it because she wants to do it. It's a part of her. It's who she is. And not a woman who's doing it so she can get to the pocketbooks and get her bills paid. That's what I'm suspecting, people. I'm not going to just like double down on it too hard and say that's what it is. But that's what I'm suspecting is going on. You got one fake submissive woman who is Chance and you got a real one. And Crystal, who was on that date, was the real submissive woman. And uh, Chance, I don't want to say she's fake, but she's like part-time submissive. <laughs> she ain't full-time submissive. She's submissive when you're paying all the bills. But then when it comes to doing what she wants to do, uh, she's not submissive. When uh, Daddy Dunbar got home from his date, his best date ever, <laughs> Chance was fast asleep in the house. Didn't she tell him he had to be home before the street lights came on or otherwise he's going to be outside sleeping with the pigeons? So you mean to tell me she went to sleep before the street lights? That must mean that Daddy Dunbar got home late. Late. He had a long a date and late. And Chance, guess what? She went right to sleep. She didn't care too much. Pretty soon I'll be like, she don't even love this man. <laughs> By the next two, two episodes, I might be saying, uh, Chance don't even love this man. But we're going to keep going. I ain't going to go that far yet. I am not going to go that far yet. And the other reason I don't think that, that um, Chance is all that submissive, because when Dr. Stacy, every, every time Dr. Stacy confronts her or anything, she bites back. She challenges Dr. Stacy. She kind of gets a little bit of a nice, nasty attitude. And I keep saying, that ain't it. It's the same way I talk about Jeffrey on Ready to Love. She says she's submissive, but anytime someone questions her or says anything different, they bite back. They snap back. No, nah, that's not what women who get along. and That's not how they act. That's not how they act. But that's a chance. That's chance. And the next thing you know, Dr. Stacy gets there and um, they're all talking as a group. And Dr. Stacy says, you know what, what's going on? What is going on? Because I want to talk to you guys first because she says, I smell a rat. I smell some fakeness. She didn't call it fakeness, but that's pretty much what she was saying. What's going on? And when she was first talking, a daddy Dunbar was sitting there. He was about to cry. A chance was sitting there, sitting stone faced, ready to go to battle with Dr. Stacy, ready to clap back, ready to buck up on Dr. Stacy. And, um, Chance finally, I mean, Dr. Daddy Dunbar felt like he had a little bit of a safe space to talk. And he was like, well, you know, some of the problems are, you know, I feel like I want to be the leader of the family and let her follow me in my decisions. But, you know, it seems as if, you know, she doesn't trust me with anything. And next thing you know, she's always a talking to her daddy first. And what did um, Chance do? I know I don't. I know I don't. <laughs> I was like, oh, girl, that ain't submissive. That's not submissive. She's like, no, I don't. But you know what? I believe Daddy Dunbar. I believe Daddy Dunbar, but that's exactly what happens with Chance. Because remember last week, Chance said she was raised by her father, solely by her father. And she is pretty much a daddy's girl. And remember, I told y'all last week I was a daddy's girl. 
And I'm going to tell you that um, prior to dating, daddy, daddy girl, daddy's girls get used to the advice of their fathers. It is true because you're close to your fathers when you don't have a husband or a boyfriend or a man in your life. And even sometimes when you do, you still rely upon your father because you've been relying upon him for what your whole life. You don't just all of a sudden dump your daddy. You love your daddy. You think I'm just going to dump my daddy for you? No, uh, daddy's girls stick to their daddies. So I do believe Chance, I mean, I do believe Daddy Dunbar when he says, when you want to make investment decisions, when you want to make business decisions, when you want to make this, you go to your daddy first. And a Chance up there and said, that's not true. How do I do it? Give me specifics. Give me specific, specifics. She started trying to pin him down. And Daddy Dunbar got all tight tongue, tight tongue, and he couldn't articulate himself. And then Dr. Stacy said, well, if you don't have any concrete examples, Daddy Dunbar, basically, I'm going to have to go with Chance. But you know, that's not it. I believe that he couldn't get his words together because a chance was all on top of Daddy Dunbar. The submissive woman was all on top of Daddy Dunbar. But I believe Daddy Dunbar's story. I believe it because one is I'm a daddy's girl. And two, I believe it because I've done that. And I, and I believe that when you relied upon a man in your life, like she said, who's a strong leader, he was a nice, her father has all these nice things to say that she, he would be the one that she would go to first and ask for his advice. And she would have to learn over time, just like I had to learn because I was doing the same thing. You would have to learn over time to start trusting your mate and going to your mate before you went to your daddy, even though that was what you was used to. It's no different from when women are close to the real, close to their mothers, and they go to their mothers for advice before they go to anyone else. But for men, like Daddy Dunbar, it's intimidating because what they look at is your father is someone I have to compete with. See, if you go to your mother for advice all the time and get advice, men don't feel threatened by your mother. They don't look like they got to compete with your mama because that's your mama. She's a woman. But men who see how who men who date a daddy's girl, they are threatened by dad, the fathers of daddy girls. Even if the fathers aren't trying to be over intrusive, they're still threatened because they see this woman relying upon and loving another man. And that's what they want from that woman. So they can become jealous of your father. I've lived that life. I know what it looks like. And that's what's going on with Daddy Dunbar. He's probably calling it correct with Chance that she does still very much depend on her father for advice and other things. And what he's saying is, I want you to transfer that faith and that confidence that you have in your father. I want you to transfer it to me. But it's not that easy to do. I get that for Chance. I do get that. But her denying it, her denying it is the problem I have. Her snap back at it is what I have, which means she's not aware of what's going on. She's not even aware of probably what she's doing. And once you're not aware, then you don't want to take any accountability for it, which means now you don't want to change. See, first you got to become aware, then you got to take accountability for it, and then you got to change. Whole lot of steps to get there, but she's right here at the point where she's denying it and it even happens. And Daddy Dunbar over here is about to be in tears over it, in tears. This is why he tries to be so strong because really what he's trying to do is he's trying to outdo the daddy. He's trying to be to chance what the daddy is to chance. And so he's really competing with the daddy. So he's actually being really, really, really probably overly aggressive, overly assertive. And um, chance ain't going to go for it. She ain't going to go for that. He even said that... Um, he even said that Chance never asked for help and she admitted she doesn't ask for help. Then where are you going? So that's the other part. Men who want to be leaders, protectors, providers, they want you to ask for help. That's what they want. They want you to ask for help. They want to be the heroes in your life. So one is she probably doesn't ask him for a lot of help. And two, when she does need help, the first person she goes to is her daddy. Daddy Dunbar ain't lying. He ain't lying. Now, the question will be, uh, why doesn't she want to ask uh, Daddy Dunbar? Maybe she don't like his answers. Maybe she doesn't respect his intellect. Maybe she doesn't respect his decision making. Maybe the only reason, the only part of uh, Daddy Dunbar she likes is when she, he's handing her some money. But she don't want him in his money. She doesn't want him in her money affairs. Could be a whole lot of stuff. But because she's not being transparent, she's really not telling the whole story. You really don't know. But I have faith in uh, Dr. Stacy. Dr. Stacy going to get to it. Dr. Stacy is going to get to the middle of it. She really is. I could already tell. That's why she sent that's why she sent Chance out the room. She said, "I'm going to need you to leave because she already sensed 
that Daddy Dunbar had some stuff up in him that he was almost afraid to say in Chance's face, or if Chance said it, she was going to jump down his throat. She ain't submissive. That's why when he was sitting across from a real, authentic, submissive woman who was Crystal, he felt at home, he felt at peace, and what he said was it was the best date he's ever been on. The best date he's ever been on. These two. Dr. Stacy got her work cut out for her. I hope she can help him. I hope she can help him. But then we're going to move on to this other couple, jo uh, Joya and Joshua. And uh, Joya better be careful. Uh, she better be careful because when that girl walked up in the room, what was her name? What was her? Celine. <laughs> when Celine walked up in that house with that body hug and dress, uh, looking cute, um, even uh, Joya had to say, you know what? I'm a little bit nervous. Let me go over here and hit this bottle. <laughs> she went over there and had to... Uh, uh, guzzle down that glass of wine she probably went through two bottles of wine she probably went through two bottles of wine because first of all she knew that this girl looked good and she knew that physically this would be a girl her man would be interested in and little does she know that not only would he be interested in her physically that when they got at that table and they start talking about all this a chakra and meditation and going to the buddha man and all this um you know uh, self-meditation ah. woo! Joshua over there, Joshua, whatever was over there, like this is this is it. This is right here. This is what I'm looking for. This is what I'm looking for because I told I told everybody last week. It's not that he doesn't like Joya. It's not that he um, doesn't like her in love with her. But I have a funny feeling he's now 40 years old and he still don't interested in having no baby. I thought he was younger when he was talking about he's not ready for kids, but he'll be ready for kids. In another, what, four years, he said. Three, three or four years. 43, 44. He don't want no kids. He's 40 years old already, and he still doesn't want any kids. He said, it's the, but the kid bug is going to hit him when he's about 44. And she's already 37. She got one child already. I guess he's 11. So he is kind of what a stepdaddy already. And probably what he's done is he's got a whiff of what taking care of kids is like. Because he's had to, he had to step in and be a stepdaddy. And what he's probably saying is, I don't want no more of this. I see the job of stepdaddy. I see the work it takes to be a parent. And what he's saying is, I'm not for sure I want any kids. He's, he's telling her maybe three years. But really what he should say is, I don't even know if I want any kids. That's what he really should tell her. Not that I want kids in three or four years. He should say, I don't even know if I want any kids. And that's okay. That's why when he sat across from that girl who was 30 years old, and she said, first of all, he was liking her because she was 30, which means she's not 37, which means she has more years, which means he could get with her. And even if he needed four more years, she'd only be 34. She could still have kids. So he's like, first of all, the ages work better for me, 30 and 40. That gives me a little bit, gives her a little bit more runway than my 37-year-old girlfriend got. Second of all, she said, if I'm not married, I'm not having no kids, and I will be okay with that. Then he really liked that answer, because he was like, man, that also gives me the option of never having no kids. Then to tell me you like to go to Thailand and meditate and all this other kind of stuff. Woo! Uh, Joy, you better, did that man even come home that night? Did Josh even come home? Because he might uh, just pack his bags and go right on with Celine. I'm telling you, it's not that he does not care about Joya. It may not be that he doesn't love Joya. He may have a fantastic time with her. But this man does not want any kids. Definitely not in no year or two years. We'll have to see how it plays out, people. We'll see how, see if, how it uh, turns around. But uh, this, uh, he was so excited about this date, he was doing push-ups, getting ready for this date. He was just a little bit too excited about the date for me. That's why he didn't give her no boundaries last week, because he didn't want no boundaries. He was like, you don't need no boundaries, uh, Joya, because I don't want no boundaries. He going to date for real. He's going to date for real, for real. Like I said, he going to be like Darian last year. He going to really date. I'm not going to say he going to be a dog like Darian was, but he going to really, really date. He was loving this girl's energy. He's, I, I'm going to be interested in hearing when they say, do you want a second date? I'm going to be interested in hearing um, if he says no or yes. I'm going to put my money on yes. He's going to go out with her again. If he says no, he's only going to do it because he don't want to make Joya mad, but he really want to go out with her again. Absolutely, he does. He going to want to go out with her again. This is going to be interesting. Unless that girl turned out to be a fake and phony because she did sit over there talking about she knew Spanish, and then when he, when he and then when, um, 
I guess uh, Joshua knows how to speak Spanish too. When and then when she tried to say a few words in Spanish, I don't know which jumbled. I speak enough Spanish to know that she stumbled across that Spanish. I was like, girl, I thought you told us you spoke Spanish like fluently. Okay, uh, you sp you speak Spanish poquito. Habla español poquito. <laughs> oh my goodness, that was funny. But we'll see how much of it is real. We'll see how much of it's real about her. But if she's a real deal. Joy is going to have a problem on her hands. She's going to have a problem on her hands. <laughs> and then we move on to this day with Catherine and Ricky. Ricky, we're going to need to send him some um, Vaseline, some chapstick on those lips with the peeling lips and the cracked lips. Ooh. No wonder they don't kiss. I probably wouldn't kiss them either. I'm like, go put some Vaseline on your lips. But let me tell you this. Uh, before this date even happened and you have them talking about their living situation, and Ricky talking about he pays all the bills. People, what is what are they running over there? Is this a hotel? Is this a hostel? <laughs> this ain't no house. This is not classified as a house. You got this many people living up in one place. This is a hostel. This is a hotel. And um, Ricky is the innkeeper. Talking about, is everybody over there living rent free? Is everyone over there living rent free? Are all these brothers and sisters and everybody else, including Catherine, is everybody living over there rent free? When Ricky says, I pay all the bills, is it because the rent of the brother and sister means that a Catherine don't have to pay no bills? <laughs> or is it because um, he charging everybody? I, I called Catherine last week a uh, roommate that they just roommates. Um, I'm demoting her. She ain't a roommate no more. She a tenant. <laughs> She had in at the guest. She is a, a hotel, a customer, a client. What is going on over here? This is not a man who's trying to build a relationship and a family with Catherine. He done packed the house with so many people. They are not even roommates. He running the inn over here, people. He's the innkeeper. Lord have mercy. And then uh I got on Catherine last week because she wore these sweatpants to that date she went on with Mark. And then she said to, she was mad when this girl showed up with a real nice dress on and said, oh, why do they get to go out on a date? And I had to dress a casual. First of all, Catherine, what you had on was not considered casual. What you had on was workout clothes. If someone was taking me out on a date and they said, we're going on a date, but let's just dress casually. I wouldn't have worn what Catherine had on. I don't consider that casual. I consider that I'm about to go running. I'm about to go ride a bike. I'm about to go out and play some basketball. That's not casual. So she must not know a tire. Um, uh, you never go out on a first date unless the guy's telling you we're about to go out and play some basketball. And even then, I don't know if I'll probably try to look a little cute. But anyway, so she put her own self in that trick bag. But then when the date came to the house, Catherine's over here in some two sizes, two big sweatpants and floppy uh, house slippers. No wonder they're not getting in. Uh, no wonder they're not getting in because I'm telling you, Catherine don't show no sex appeal. She don't show none. I ain't no way I'm going to have a woman come pick up my man and I'm not going to be looking good. I'm going to at least do what Joya did over there. Joya got a little midriff shirt on. Well, I can't wear that because I ain't got no abs like Joya. But I'm going to look cute. No way you're going to come and pick up my man and you're going to be looking cuter than me. I don't care if I'm not going nowhere. I'm going to look cute. And she's sitting over here in these sweatpants and, and, and shoes talking about why she get to dress up. Girl, girl, these two friends with benefits. I call them friends with benefits last week. They're not friends with benefits. They, you sleeping with, uh, Catherine sleeping with the, the front desk clerk. <laughs> That's Ricky. Ricky, the front desk clerk. That's like going to a hotel, staying in a hotel. And next thing you know, you smashing the front desk man. This is a mess, y'all. This is a mess. But then when Ricky was telling this story with his date, his date, who was his date? Catherine talking about, no, not Miss Day wasn't Catherine. What was the date's name? The date name was Sheila. She said she's a tomboy at heart. And, uh, you know, so Ricky starts talking about the fact that, ooh, she listens to me more than Catherine does. But then when he started telling his story about, well, you know, sometimes my ex-wife is an entertainer. She'd be on the road entertaining, which means she's probably glamorous. If she's an entertainer, she's glamorous. So he done gone from a glamorous woman who cheated on him when she was on the road to a woman over here who walks around in house slippers and sweatpants. You get the picture, people? 
Ricky's only with Catherine because Catherine's safe. It's his safe space. It's his rebound. He went from a glamorous woman who's in the world of entertainment, traveling around the world, on the road, hanging around entertainers, all this other kind of stuff. You know that life. And that woman cheated on him. They have a child. And I was asking, do they have a child? They have a child together. I don't know if it's one or two. And he switched over here to Catherine, who likes to stay at home, live with a bunch of people, walks around in sweatpants and flip-flops at the end, at the hostel. Catherine is his safe space. What he's saying is, ain't no way Catherine will ever cheat on me. Look at her. She's safe for me. It's sad to watch, y'all. It's sad to watch. But anyway, he was on this date with this woman talking about, well, you know, Catherine gets mad when I be sleeping over my ex ex's house on the couch because she won't come home. And so I end up just sleeping on the couch. Good Lord. First of all, there's a couple of problems. A couple of problems. Why can't your children, when she's out on the road, come over and stay at the house with you and Catherine and everybody else at the hotel? It's a hotel. Why can't everybody come over here and say, why you got to go over there and stay? And then you mean to tell me your wife don't communicate with you what time she's going to be back to the point where she just walk in anytime she wants to in the house and you just end up sleeping on the couch, downstairs on the couch, the sofa. I don't even think he's sleeping with the ex-wife because the ex-wife don't want him. The ex-wife don't want Ricky. She ain't sleeping with him. Maybe here and there. I don't know. I wouldn't be surprised if she is. She don't want him. She using him for a free babysitter. She using him for everything else. She don't want him. She don't want him at all. This is a sad situation. But the fact that he doesn't see a problem with it, the fact that he doesn't see a problem with it, and the fact that he's okay at living, leaving Catherine at home by herself, unattended, in her robe and slippers, he ain't worried. He ain't worried a one bit. This is a rebound relationship that has just gone on too long. It's, he should have only been with Catherine for about a month or two, and he should have left her alone. But it's safe for him. It's safe for him. Sad to watch, people. A sad to watch. We'll see if he goes out with Sheila again. He may not. I don't think it's going to be a guaranteed yes. I think what he got, what he got from her was good. It was confirmation that what, she, what he's doing is okay. Sheila try to act like she's this strong woman. Like, it wouldn't bother me. It wouldn't bother me. Girl, please. She no, ain't no man I was going to... No, that's ridiculous. Bring those kids over here. Nothing, nothing says you can't keep your kids. You can't babysit your kids. But why the kids can't come over here and stay? Was it because the mama don't want the kids over there with Catherine? What's the problem? Why can't the kids come over here? Why is the solution for you to be sleeping over there on the couch? Because he wants to. He probably need a break from Catherine in that hotel they probably be ringing the front desk too much <laughs> saying can you room service can you bring me up a iron <laughs> can you bring me up some coffee i'm hungry what time does room service close he's tired of being the gate the uh, front desk clerk he is tired folks this season is gonna be a hot a hot mess but i'm here for it i can't wait to see what's gonna happen i can't wait to see what's gonna happen but that's it, y'all. Talk to you later. Bye.